what is going on traders whoa that is kind of a ominous background behind me i didn't mean for it to be that ominous however it is appropriate because in this video i'm going to be telling you five ways that you can avoid a disaster in your portfolio now i know what a lot of you are saying my portfolio is already a disaster. And based on the comments I get, I know some of you are 100% cash at the moment. Some of you are actively trading in the same way that we do. And throughout this whole year, and really throughout the existence of this channel, I've been providing you with ways on how to hedge and different ways of looking at the market because the market does give you opportunities to really play any direction. Your hands are not tied. Everything will be distributed in the chapters below, so feel free to forward and rewind to the section that's appropriate to you. There will be a combination of strategies that entail both investment investing and trading because remember trading and investing are two entirely different sports actually investing is more like a strategy and trading is more like a sport however they are different so without further ado here are five ways to ensure that your portfolio doesn't get crushed in a longer term bear market or recession Now, before I get into each strategy, I just want to say a general rule of thumb is I personally have two portfolios. So I have a long-term portfolio that I've been building really since 2008, 2009, and I have a trading portfolio. The reason that I don't like mixing them both is because I don't want one to inform the decision of the other. A lot of times when you're buying things that are high conviction for the long term, if you are using that same account to trade and you are in and out of positions on a more uh, regular basis, then you will look at your long-term positions when they are down and be compelled to do something stupid with them that you otherwise wouldn't do or that you really aren't intending on doing because those are long-term positions. So strategy number one, wake up neutral and trade the trend. What do I mean by this? Well, every single day we send out this day trade watch list where we draw levels of resistance and support and based on which way the chart breaks, if it breaks and closes convincingly above or below those levels, then we enter either the calls above resistance or the puts below support. Now, this allows you to not hold trades over a period of a day or longer you are in and out the same day now don't worry if you're not in the group i will show you how to get these levels it is basically just consistent of drawing support and resistance so you have to at least know how to do that i have a free ta course here if you just click this link it's on youtube it will teach you how to draw basic support and resistance but you will need this in order to execute this type of strategy now i personally use thinkorswim for this you can use any platform that has charting capabilities really but for me thinkorswim is second to none. So on this day, for instance, I wake up every day, gray is pre-market and I draw the support level. So in this case, I would draw it here. And this is actually a trade that we took today, but on the triple Qs, we drew support here. And we said that if we get a close below this level around 291, then we would enter puts. Here's the actual level from today, 291.20. We would buy the 290 puts. Now, the reason that I picked 290 is because I looked at the volume and open interest, and that was the most liquid option that was just below below our level. And you want to pick liquid options as often as possible because the bid ask spread is narrow. And you can see at the moment that we close below that level on the five minute, we went from $3.30 on that option to $7.60. That is more than 100 percent gain on those put options. Now, when drawing support levels, for instance, you want to make sure you incorporate as much data as possible. So not only did I get the pre-market levels, but this black here is from the day before. So I'm incorporating as many touch points as I can before drawing that support level. Same thing for the resistance level. So in this case, if QQQ went above this level here and we got a convincing close, then I would have bought calls, but we didn't. So we cracked the other way. That is why I say wake up neutral and trade the trend because I didn't have to to guess this the night before. I can wake up pre-market and execute this based on what I'm seeing. Now, will you get it 100% of the time? No, but more often than not, you will. And the goal here is just to win at a disproportionate level more than you lose. We also had a very similar trade on AMD today, which also netted us over 100% because AMD also broke down due to the technicals, but also there was some news related to the semiconductor industry. Either way, I didn't have to guess this the day before. I didn't have to hold a multi-day or multi-week short on AMD. I just woke up, drew the trend exactly in the same way that I told you, you know, use the support points from the day before as well as support from pre-market. Once we broke below that, I bought the puts and those are up 115%. Now, if day trading is not for you, I totally get it. It does take a lot of skill, patience, and it, it takes more so a desire to want to do it. If you don't have the time nor the desire, that's fine. There are many other strategies. We're going to go over four more strategies on this list. Also, as I showed you, I do have a free TA course that will teach you how to draw 
draw support and resistance a lot easier. However, if you want to trade with our group and you want access to the day trade watch list every single day and you want to be able to chat this out with thousands of other traders who are doing the same thing and that will sharpen your skill and take you to the next level a lot quicker than you would on your own, then you want to apply using the link in the description. We have closed signups ever since we launched our new platform. The new platform gives you access to all the courses, all the coaches, all the Zoom calls with me, all the mastermind calls with me. We get on calls and you literally get to ask me any question you want for an entire hour about option strategies, technical analysis. I coach you on these different things. We go over previous trades that you might have questions on. It is an entire package and we're keeping it a tight knit group for those that really want to join. So apply to the Traveling Trader Academy using the link below would love to have you. Also keep in mind that there's a misconception when it comes to options trading. When you are just buying options, buying calls or buying puts, you cannot lose more than you buy the call or the put for, right? It's just like stocks. When you buy that stock, you cannot lose more money than you put in. So there's this really strong misconception that you can lose a lot more than you put in. Now, once you get into selling strategies or more complex strategies, yes, there are certain points at which you can actually lose more than what your capital commitment is. But when you're buying options, that is not the case. That's the max that you can lose is what you pay for that option. All right, strategy number two are defined risk trades. So you can use options in order to set up defined risk trades and not really have to be significantly right on those trades. What do I mean? So on Nike earnings day, we sold what is called an iron condor, which is one of the defined risk strategies that I'm going to talk about right now. The implied earnings move was plus or minus 9%. How do I know this? Well, I see it here in market community million, it tells me the implied earnings move plus or minus 9%. Now you can calculate this based on the at the money straddle price, or you can look at something like think or swim, where it will tell you on the earnings date up here where it says market maker move in yellow, it will give you what the expected move is. Well, Nike earnings have already passed. So right now it is not telling us that it is an eight or 9% move, but that's neither here nor there. So we ended up selling an iron condor on Nike and we needed Nike to be between a hundred $101 and $120 for earnings. Well, Nike opened up at 108 and we managed to close this position for 85%. So what is an iron condor? An iron condor allows you to create a range for a stock. And if the stock is anywhere in that range and the option expires, then you get to keep 100% of what you sold it for. And the range would be created here by the credit put spread and here by the credit call spread. So in this case, we sold the 101 put on Nike and we bought the 100 put in order to create this spread. So we bought this and we sold this. And on, on the call side, we bought the 121 call on Nike and sold the 120 call. This is what creates these two ranges, right? So anytime you are selling an iron condor on the call side, you will be buying the higher call and selling the lower one. And on the put side, you will be buying the lower put and selling the higher one. Let me just put P here, P here, C here, C here. And of course, you can always Google or watch a video on exactly how to set up an iron condor, but it is basically a risk defined strategy. Now we sold this thing for 40 cents. And when you are selling options, you cannot ever gain more than you sold it for. So in this case, our max gain would be 40 cents or $40 because you have to multiply options contracts by 100 since it is the right to control 100 shares. What is our max loss here? Remember, it is risk defined. Well, in between 101 and 100 is a dollar. In between 121 and 120 is a dollar. So the max value of this iron condor is $1. Now, if that confuses you because there's two sides, I'll explain it in a second. But a dollar minus 0.4 is 0 0.6. So you your max loss if Nike went above 121 or below 100 is $60. If it stays anywhere between 101 and 120, you gain 100% of the $40 that you sold this for. And obviously the total amount of money that you make depends on how many contracts you sell. So $40 here, $60 if it's above 120, a $60 loss if it's above 121, and a $60 loss if it's below 100. So risk defined 
find strategies can work really well during a bear market because we don't even really need the stock to do anything except for to be within our range here. That's all we need it to do is just stay within our range. It doesn't have to go up significantly. It doesn't have to go down significantly. And you can close this early. As you saw, we closed it for 85% early because it expires in three days as of the time of this recording, but we closed it the next day after earnings. Now, why is the max loss only a dollar if you have two credit spreads here, right? Because you have a dollar here and a dollar here. Well, because only one side can lose, right? So if you lost on this side, if you lost this, uh, if, if, if Nike went below 100, you lost this entire spread. However, you have max gain on this spread because it is below 120. And if Nike went above 121 and you had the max loss here, well, only this side can lose because now it is above 101. So you actually won on this side. That's why even in an iron condor where you have two credit spreads, the max value is only the width of whichever one of these is greater. In this case, the width of this is a dollar, the width of this is a dollar. So the max value is a dollar. Again, you'll have access to all the courses where all the stuff is taught. You'll have access to the mastermind calls with me where you get to ask these questions live over Zoom. We're also chatting about this stuff all day, every day in the academy. Other risk defined strategies include things like vertical spreads, where in this case, for instance, if Tesla has support at around 640 recently, where you see this double bottom bounce and you think Tesla is going to stay above 640, well, you could sell a put vertical spread and all that would need to happen for you to gain 100% profit is for Tesla to stay above 640. Again, you don't have to be significantly right. You just have to be generally right in the fact that Tesla remains above 640. Doesn't matter if it's 640 and a penny or 700. The gain is the same. It's risk defined and it's gain defined as well. So in this case, if you think Tesla is going to remain above 640, what you could do is sell the 640, 635 put vertical spread. If you look down here my order, you'll see that if you're initiating a put credit vertical spread where you want the stock to stay above a certain level, you would sell the higher put, in this case 640, and you would buy the lower put 635. In this case, we are selling this for $3.32. Now, what is the max value of the spread? It's the width of the strike. So in this case, it's a $5 spread. We're collecting $3.32. That means that our max loss is only a dollar. 68 and our max gain is $3.32. Again, you have to multiply this by 100. So $332 is your gain. $168 is your max loss. Now, where do you incur your max loss? Well, if at expiration Tesla's below 640, then you'll be down $168 on this position. You cannot lose more than that. If it is above 645, then you're going to gain 332 on this position. You cannot make more than that. This only requires $500 of collateral because because the width of the strikes is $5. All right, strategy number three in how to not get your portfolio obliterated during a bear market. I've talked about this before and I did a whole video on it. We're going to be taking a completely different turn here into investing. And this is a series I savings bond. Now these savings bonds are inflation adjusted. So the amount that you get paid or the yield is variable based on inflation. And since inflation is sky high, these bonds are paying a historical rate of 9.5%. Now, why are these bonds favorable to other bonds and treasuries right now? Well, because it is really the only bond, the only safe bond, right, that is backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government, as opposed to junk bonds or high risk corporate bonds, for instance. But it is the only safe fixed asset that is going to give you a rate that currently beats the year over year inflation rate. So year over year inflation is 8.6%. This is the only safe thing on the market that pays you more than that. The only drawback here, as I mentioned in that video is you can invest a maximum of $10,000. Now you can invest $10,000 for each member of your family if you have a family. So that's kind of a way to get around that hurdle. Now you only have to hold these for a period of at least a year. However, if you need a place to park some cash right now and you don't want to invest in stocks or anything other, any other risky asset, this is a perfect place in my opinion, as again, this is government issued. You would just need to go on the treasurydirect.gov site, register an account, which is very easy to do, will take you a couple minutes, and then you can actually buy a Series I savings bond. All right, so the fourth way to make sure that your portfolio doesn't get obliterated in a bear market, this is an investing strategy that is going to seem kind of straightforward because you're going to be like, oh yeah, you're just saying to buy stocks. However, I'm not. This is way more nuanced. So the first thing that you want to keep track of when you are investing in companies, make sure you are investing in quality companies. If 2020 and 2021 taught newbies anything is that the market will eventually come home to roost and make companies prove their valuations. I did 
did a video on why I think based on on history, just because I've been around for so long and I've seen what happened in the dot com crash, I've seen what happened in the 2008 financial crisis and how a lot of companies did not come back ever from the highs that they hit. And I'm not talking about only the DraftKings or Teladocs or whatever. I'm also talking about companies like Citi, which never recovered from the 2008 financial crisis. So first rule of thumb is make sure that you are sticking to quality companies, not just companies that somebody told you to buy or companies that you believe in just, you know, without really any sort of fundamental backing. And if you don't want to pick companies and it, you're just, your brain is just completely racked or you're completely turned off from what happened in 2020 and 2021 or, or after 2021, then just invest in the index funds because these funds actually are rotating all the time based on market cap. So the S&P 500 ETF right now does not look like the S&P 500 ETF from 2008 or from 2000 or from 1987. It's completely different because the landscape is changing. So right now, for instance, Apple and Microsoft are the top two most valuable companies in the United States. But back in 2008, I think Microsoft was third and Apple might have been 17th or 18th. Now, second rule of thumb, I want to give you a little bit more nuance is investing when the VIX or the volatility index is high. The VIX is the fear gauge of the market. It is based on S&P 500 options trading. So when the VIX is relatively high, when it's 40 or above, if you look at this chart here, this is from the street.com. This shows that your gains are exponentially maximized when you invest when there's ultimate fear in the market. Remember, Warren Buffett said, be greedy when others are fearful. This is for a reason. Look at what happens if you invest only when the VIX is above 40. Your gains are 2x to 10x, depending on the sector here, all across the board. Now, nobody can time the bottom in the S&P 500 or, or really in any stock, right? Nobody can time the bottom. But if you just invested when the fear gauge was high and you didn't really care whether the price had dropped incrementally or not, you know that you were investing when the market is at absolute fear, which is the best time to invest historically. It doesn't mean, again, that you're going to catch the bottom. You are basically being a contrarian and investing when everybody else is capitulating. Now, you could take this a step further, and the third tenant that I'll talk about with regards to investing is, obviously, you want to invest in quality companies. You want to invest during times of extreme fear. And if you add the dividend factor to this, it doesn't mean that every stock you have to buy pays a dividend. But if you do find stocks that also pay a dividend, this will help you beat out any sort of inflationary pressure pressures that your cash is feeling. So for instance, energy is really hot right now. And if you're looking at Devon Energy as something that you want to hold in your portfolio, Devon Energy is currently paying a forward yield of 8.79%. Now, if you invest in Devon Energy and the stock price goes down, you are guaranteed to get this dividend yield as long as this company continues to pay a dividend and you can see their dividend safety rate at A+. So the thing with dividend companies is that even if their dividend isn't a rate that beats out what current inflation is, you are also investing in that company's equity. And if you're expecting that company to grow over the next five to 10 years, well, not only are you getting that excellent dividend yield, which helps to combat inflation as opposed to your money just sitting in cash, but you are also building an equity position in the company and that stock price can hopefully go up over the next five to 10 years if it is a quality company that has a lot of value and growth. And the fifth and final way to help your portfolio not get obliterated in a bear market is to sell cash secure puts. I left this until the end because this is the one that requires the most capital. However, if capital is your only barrier and you can get over that hump, this is really the easiest way to invest in the market and not wait for a stock market bottom. I've talked about cash secured puts ad nauseum, but basically you get to name your own price for the stock that you want to own. So for instance, let's look at Tesla here. Tesla is currently trading at around $695. If I wanted to buy Tesla, I didn't know whether this was the bottom. I don't want to overpay. I'm kind of scared to invest invest here, but I do have cash to invest and I wanted to name my own price for Tesla, I could sell a cash secure put going further out, let's say towards the end of the year, the further out you go, the more you will get paid for this put and I can name my own price for Tesla. Now I actually have a position on Tesla here, a cash secure put that I sold that's up currently 30%. So I already did this, but let's say you went out to December, you could sell the 400 cash secure put on Tesla for $2,500. What does this mean? This means that if Tesla Tesla is not below 400, you get to keep that 2,500 bucks. If Tesla is below 400, well, then you achieved your goal of being able to buy Tesla at 400 because you will be assigned 100 shares of Tesla at 400, but you also collected $25 a share 
for this put. So your real cost basis on Tesla is 375. This to me is free money. You are getting paid to wait for a price that you want to pay on Tesla. And 400 is, is really an extreme case. I mean, a lot of people would pay 500 for Tesla, right? In this case, you could sell the 500 put for $4,800 almost, which would put your cost basis on Tesla at around 452 bucks if you're assigned 100 shares. Now, this is why this requires a lot of capital because you will need the capital to buy 100 shares of Tesla in case you get assigned. But if you were doing this on a margin account, they're only going to require about a quarter of the capital up front, which means that you're getting paid about $4,800 on $12,000 collateral, which is a great return on your money because the worst case scenario is that you get assigned Tesla at a cheaper price, a price that you want. Now, this is why I did leave it till the end because I can appreciate that this requires a tremendous amount of capital, but it really is the easiest way to invest in the market. And it allows you not to really play this guessing game of whether the market is going to go lower or not because you are naming your own price for a stock that you want to own. Anyway, traders, hope you got something out of this video. If you did, leave it a thumbs up, share it to your friends or, or whoever you think would benefit out of this. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of these strategies. Again, signups to the group are closed. However, we are taking applications for the academy where you get access to the courses, the mastermind calls, the Zoom calls, the chats, the alerts, the watch list, the day trade watch list, etc. You get all of that in the entire package if you click the link below and you are approved. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, stay safe out there traders. Peace.